It makes us want to merit the attention, the discipline, the love of the brotherhood. It makes us feel like striving when we know we have a chief or a coach who is appreciating our overcoming, who understands the trials and tribulations we go through, and who welcomes our victories. You know, when we have no one to be beautiful for, no one to be victorious for, no one to work for or accomplish for, we kind of lose interest, lose interest in life itself. That's why we need to love and be loved. But when we understand that there's a higher order of evolution, there are ascended masters who are watching us and working with us. They need us. Humanity needs us. We become that point of the fourth ray. We become the keystone in the arch, key to the ascended master's work, key to other people discovering the great light. So when you have a usefulness and a meaning in life, you strive more to perfect yourself, to do a better job at that very job of being useful. Serapis writes to Alcott, upon returning from the office, no, the Brotherhood will be assembled in her, HPB's, room, and seven pairs of eels will listen to your reports and judge of the progress your Atma does in relation to intuitional perceptions. Heed her not when she will tell you that your words do not interest her. Go on and know you are talking in the presence of your brethren. When needed, they will answer you through her. God's blessing upon thee, brother mine, Serapis. Now that's a very cute letter that is written directly to Alcott without the knowledge of HPB. When Alcott is called upon to present certain facts and teachings, and Serapis is well aware that because of the cantankerous nature of HPB, she's going to down him for bringing forth this teaching. And so Serapis is saying, never mind, go on and present your teaching because the seven pairs of ears will be listening, no doubt among them the Ascended Masters. So I thought that that was very interesting, that the regard for the chila was supreme in the heart of Serapis. In another letter to him we read, I followed you, brother mine, all the day of yesterday. My sympathy was with you, and you have the approval of the brotherhood. As I have said before, the rules of the lodge are positive. You must not part with Elena if you desire your initiation, but through her you may be enabled to conquer the trials of initiation. They are hard, and you may yet despair more than once, but do not, I pray thee. Remember, some men have toiled for years for the knowledge you have obtained in a few months. Fear not, immortal man, scorn the evil whispers of the double-visaged Janus called public opinion. Obviously, public opinion has always been against the contact of the soul with the ascended masters. Why? Because the mass consciousness is dominated by the factors of its enslavement to the fallen ones and their philosophy. Where, whereas when the soul contacts the ascended masters, it begins the path of its soul liberation. And the entrenched forces of the world today do not want the individual to be free to become one with God within the sanctuary of his own being. So public opinion has not much to say for the bringing forth of the messages of the ascended masters. They are for those souls who have the light within themselves and who recognize it in the teachings of the masters. When you take the dossier on the ascension, you take the release of Serapis Bay through Mark Prophet, dictated letters. These letters were precipitated. There they were, found on the table, written in gold ink on green paper or whatever it was. There they were, signed and sealed. That was the dispensation of a century ago. Today, we receive those letters by the full power of the Holy Spirit. The dictations come forth, and they are precipitated not by paper, but by the heart flame itself. The master's heart contacting the heart of the messenger, and when the word is spoken, it reaches into your heart, and so you become the third person of this trinity. Moria, the master M, would sign his name with three dots. And in those three dots, he was teaching that law. There is the ascended master releasing the energy through the messenger, and there is the point of its goal, 
the great multitude. The great multitude of people figured in the book of Revelation are those who are the ones to receive the teachings. So the letters in the dossier are much like these letters. You can hear the directness, almost the abruptness of Serapis. He tells you immediately the sort of school he runs. He runs a tight ship, he runs a disciplined place, and he says he's not interested in people who are still crying after their earthly mothers. And he talks about people who say that it is too hard at, at Luxor and they must go home and they cannot take the disciplines. So the teaching is there for you to read and you do not need to fear to read it because it's placed in a book so that you can make contact with it and make your free will decision whether to apply that teaching. Now I told you that I was going to tell you about that symbol and that symbol that is in the book. Now I would rather not tell you about it without having the symbol on the screen and I don't think that it is ready to be on the screen in this moment. And so I'd like to save it for tomorrow because those circles and squares and triangles illustrate the most fascinating points of geometry, of the relationship of the planets, of astronomy, and ultimately of the Trinity within you. So I'll give you that when we can have our slide tomorrow. And at this moment, I would like to invite you to sing because the sing is the intoning of the flame through your chakras. And in this retreat, we're going to experience the joy of the white flame of the mother passing through our chakras for the integration of the self. Now, one of the sons of Serapis Bay is known as Dwal Kul. Dwal Kul also released his teachings in the past hundred years. He has released them again in his intermediate studies. Intermediate studies of the human aura. Those teachings give us the meditation on the secret chamber of the heart, the interior temple of illumination. Teresa of Avila records in her works going into this interior castle. She has the mystical experiences of the saints. Now the teachings of Dwal Kul are on the 12 lines of the cosmic clock. 12 points of that clock are for the 12 paths of initiation under the 12 solar hierarchies. This is not worldly astrology, it is the great astrology of the Ascended Masters and they are miles apart. The Ascended Masters teach us how to invoke the flame for the mastery of our daily astrology, which is our daily karma. Day by day, the karma, positive and negative, that comes to your life can be met and mastered by these 12 paths and 12 flames. So we're going to turn out the lights so that you can meditate on the singing of this meditation to Dwal Kul and his path of initiation.
This music of Excelsior has been put to an affirmation that I wrote down at the conclusion of Dwal Kul's dictation of this book to me, this book, The Intermediate Studies of the Human Aura. I did not know when Dwal Kul contacted me to write down this book that he had earlier prophesied that he would release his work once again in 1975. This book came on that schedule and the affirmation that you heard in this music contains the key to all of the teaching in the book. It becomes an affirmation of the principles, the teaching, the geometry that he has desired to transfer to our seven chakras for the acceleration of our being in this dispensation. So it's very exciting to me to now hear the affirmation uh, which contains the 12 paths of initiation in this music. 
I would like to make an invocation to God, invoking the light of Dwal Kul to initiate you and all of us and all of the light bearers on the earth on this very special path of love by the heart. The flame of love in the heart is his path. He's the third wise man. Moria, Kuthumi, and Dwal Kul were the three who came out of the east by the inner flame of the heart and by their certain knowledge of astronomy they knew the hour and the moment of the birth of Jesus. They came to give adoration to the incarnate word. They themselves were adepts. Dwal Kul then is the third and he teaches the path of love and love is the key to the ascension. So if you meditate with me now I'm going to make this invocation and the music is Beethoven as Saint Germain has asked us to use the nine symphonies this summer is the greatest music of freedom that has ever been lowered into this octave by an initiate in physical embodiment. We've prepared the album of the nine symphonies for you on cassette performed by the Cleveland Orchestra, George Zell. A tremendous performance and a release of light and we'll meditate with that music for our invocation now. Won't you go into the secret chamber of your heart? Oh, mighty light of freedom, come forth from out the great central sun. Oh, mighty light of freedom, Stir the hearts of souls of light everywhere. O oh, spirit of the great white brotherhood, I call thee forth upon this altar in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Mother. On behalf of these souls of light and souls of light everywhere, Come forth now with thy quickening love. Dual Kul come with Moria, El, and Kuthumi. Come forth, Saint Germain, Serapis Bay, Hilarion, and Nada. Open the way of the sevenfold path of initiation. Open the way to the twelve solar hierarchies and the Elohim. Release now the sacred fire of the heart into those who open their hearts gladly to the Christ and the Buddha for the fusion of the light of East and West. Lo, I am come to do thy will, O God, in the very center of life. Lo, each one who partakes of thy body and thy blood would also assimilate thy living word. Alpha and Omega, in the name of the living Christ, in the name of the Christ self of each one, come forth and open the way made plain. Sanat Kumara, let thy dispensations reign living word of the brotherhood of Luxor, of the royal Teton, of Darjeeling, of Lake Titicaca. Come forth now. We present ourselves, O God, the instrument of thy light. In the name of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood, the I am that I am. Dual cool, come. Dual cool. Come, come into our hearts and initiate us now in the secret chamber there. The love of the ruby ray is thine own. We take up the ruby cross, we take up the ruby ray, and we march with the legions of light. Amen.
We are grateful to the Ascended Masters for inspiring upon us and releasing the music of the spheres for this dispensation. We feel in it the new light. And when we hear it and sing it and meditate upon it, we actually feel the light of the Lamb sounding the tone that summons all of our forces and energies into an inner alignment in the inner spiral that rises in the temple. And we remember it is written in the book of Revelation that those 144,000 that gather with the Lamb, those ones who came with Sanat Kumara, the Ancient of Days, that they sing a new song. They sing a new song because they express a new vibration. The new vibration is the ancient vibration. Some of you remember at Mount Shasta in 1975 that an ascended master by the name of Ra Mu spoke to us from the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta and from the ancient temples of Lemuria. Ra Mu means the ray of Mu or the ray of the mother. And he came to anchor the light of the motherland and to anchor the light of the ancient religion of devotion to the eternal mother as the white light. The seven holy Kumaras spoke in a conference in Hawaii of the raising up of the mother flame of Lemuria. The flame was upon a central altar and around it on what is known as the fire ring of the lands that border the Pacific Ocean today, there were 12 other temples all dedicated to the mother light. Those 12 temples were for the solar initiations of the 12 hierarchies. And those initiations each had their tone and their flame. It was to those hierarchies and those flames that we just meditated and sang, as Dwal Kul has taught it to us. Ramu then has kindled in us the light of the ancient teaching of Lemuria, the light of that fourth ray that we had before the sinking of the continent. So out of his dictation has come a dispensation of that ascended master and his causal body and the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta who also sponsored Godfrey Ray King and his initiations with Saint Germain. So we have a meditation to sing to Ramu and that is in the songs that have been passed out to you. The harp string of Lemuria. The dictation of Ramu is contained in our book, The Great White Brotherhood. Thank you. 
As you know, the Ascended Masters teach the science of the invocation of the Word. Currently, the Ascended Masters, in their pearls of wisdom, are delivering to us the teachings of Sanat Kumara. And he is delivering the teachings on the ruby ray. And he spoke of the science of invocation as that by which the light of the presence is drawn into the temple of being. And he said it was the science whereby the future becomes the now. Do you know how religion has procrastinated the incarnation of the light? Messiah is always coming, the resurrection is in the future, the meeting of the master is in the future. But the science of the word draws the portion of the higher self into the heart in the now.
the now that is the only accepted time and space. Our beloved Paul the Venetian opens this retreat with a dictation that he desires to give to us in this moment. We always give before our dictations the invocation of the word for the alignment of our being with the Ascended Master who is speaking. The most important dynamic decrees that you can learn and take with you this evening are the heart, head and hand decrees. We're going to give them now and not disturb the force field by having any passed out. If you don't have them, you can get them in the foyer before leaving. Before leaving, they're a free little leaflet, the heart, head and hand. I'd like to ask you who have books to share them. And instead of teaching the science, we'll demonstrate the science. If you haven't decreed before, just close your eyes and meditate. It's another way of singing a new song. Together. Violet fire, thou love divine, lays within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. Violet fire, thou love divine, lays within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. Violet fire, thou love divine, lays within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. I am like the Christ in me, set my mind forever free. Thou art thou this heart, leap within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire, fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am like the Christ in me, set my mind forever free, violet fire forever shine, deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire, fill my head, till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My pure soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My pure soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. Beloved, I am present bright. Round me see your tube of light. From the ascended master flame, all but now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all this good sent to me. I am calling what violet fire blaze and transmute all desire. Keeping on in freedom's name, the volume one with the violet flame. Beloved, I am present, bright, round me, see your two of light, from the ascended master flame, fall forth now in God's own name, let it keep my temple free from all this good sent to me. I am calling for violet fire and blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom, they fill I am one with a violet flame. I am forgiveness acting here, casting out all doubt and fear, setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour to all life in every place. I feel for forgiving grace. I am free from fear and doubt, casting want and misery out, knowing now all good supply ever comes from God on high. I am the hand of God's own fortune, budding but with treasures of light, now receiving full abundance to supply your seed of light. I am life of God, direction blaze thy light of truth in me. Focus here, all God's perfection from all this good set me free. And he be anchored ever in the justice of life, and I am the presence of earth, living the life of God in man. I am changing all my garments, oh, and for the bright new day, with the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within without, I am light as all of God. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. Until transfigured, they describe me, I am shining like the sun, I am shining like the sun. I am the flame of resurrection, blazing God's pure light through me. Now I'm raising every atom from every shadow, I am free. I am the light of God's whole presence, I am living ever free. Now the flame of life eternal rises up to victory. I am ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. I am light, all weights are gone, in the air I raise. To all I pour with full God power, my wondrous song of praise. All hail, I am the living Christ, the ever-loving one. Ascended now with full God power, I am the blazing sun. I am ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. 
I am light all weeks are gone, into the air I raise. To all I call with full God power, my wondrous song of praise. All here I am, the living Christ, the ever-loving one. With full God power, I am the blazing sun. I am the ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. I am light, all weights are gone, into the air I raise. To all I pour with full God power, my wondrous song of praise. Oh, here I am, the living Christ, the ever-loving one. Ascended now with full God power, I am the blazing sun. We will prepare for beloved Paul the Venetian and his dictation with meditations from Beethoven. I'd, I'd like to ask you to prepare by uncrossing your legs, placing your feet flat on the floor, your hands uncrossed, your spines erect and yet comfortable. Hold your hands cupped in your lap and take a deep breath Expel the air and go into meditation on your heart. Through the flame of your own I am presence is the transfer of the word. At the conclusion of the dictation, we will seal the energies for this evening and bid you go to the retreats of the Brotherhood for your nightly meditation. We invite you to be with us tomorrow morning beginning at 9 and come by 10 if you can come for the beginning of the retreat when we will go step by step through the rigors of the path of initiation for the ascension. You're most welcome to bring your friends and the registration is open until 2 o'clock. After 2 o'clock we will not take new students into the retreat because there is a building of the force field. It's been a great joy to be with you, and I look forward to this entire weekend of the ascending spiral of our being together with the Brotherhood.
most gracious children of the sun, Serapis Bay has called, and I have answered, and so have you. And we have come to meet in the dot of the center of the circle within and without the square. And within that dot, behold, I am there, you are there, and we are one, and we have come to begin the rising spiral of being whereby ascended adepts call chilas near and far for we would set a flame and a fire here in the heart of San Francisco we come to ignite an ancient spark within the souls of devotees who have lived and served here within these seven hills that were the seven temples of the seven holy Kumaras. We come in the service of the Mother Light guarded for eons by the Goddess of Purity. You have seen the dissipation of mass elements of human karma in the recent earthquake. All of this in preparation for the release of a greater light for certain elements of the human consciousness were required by law to be dissipated before we could release those initiations to any and all who would respond to the call of Serapis. Understand then, when mankind do not themselves dissipate their human karma by ignorance and for want of the use of the violet flame, then it is elemental life who themselves, bearers of the cross of planetary karma, must expiate in physical conditions those ancient discords that prevent the race from accelerating to the higher place of God consciousness toward which you aspire. Because you aspire to that place, you have come, and because we aspire to lead you there, we have come. And therefore, the Brotherhood welcomes you in the flame of love. To service, to sacrifice, to surrender, and the path of selflessness. Is there a price for eternity? Indeed there is. It is the price of the exchange of the lesser self for the greater self. And who do you think it is, my beloved, who gets the greater bargain? Why, of course, it is the soul who comes, who must surrender that which appears to be the only thing that it can surrender, but in reality, the thing surrendered is not the real self, but the temporary portion, the temporary self. Thereby, in having that self to give, one can receive the initiation of the descent of the higher self. Is there any other path? Is there any other goal? Believe it not. For some have offered an easier way, the way of indulgence or formulas, or this or that mantra as being the all and the end and the everything of life. Well, my beloved, if it were so, then many, many would have joined the ranks of the candidates for the ascension at the Temple of Luxor. But as a matter of fact, they have not. And therefore, the many byways offered today coming with the allure of making life easier and exalting the outer personality 
have detoured souls of light to endless, endless labyrinthian passages. But all this must end. When does it end? It ends when the individual soul declares, Enough! I have had enough. I will find my freedom, and I will find it lawfully, lovingly, God's way, the way of the eternal Logos, the way that the doves have flown, the way that the stars glow. Oh, my beloved, yes, there are innocent sheep trapped in the false teachings, but there are also many who are also the goats who enjoy the false teachings because they enjoy the perpetuation of unreality. Therefore, this is the question you must ask yourself. Do I desire to know the truth even when the truth hurts? Or do I desire to continue hearing only what the lesser self desires to hear. By and by, the real souls of God tire of the half-baked half-truths. By and by, the souls who are real come to the door of Luxor. My brother Serapis and El Moria have called upon me to speak to you, for they would give to you through me the essence of love that is the true heart of the initiations of Luxor. Though many there have been who have denied that there is any love in Serapis or in the brothers of his retreat because of the appearance of sternness Indeed, they are one-pointed and sure-footed. Indeed, they know the way and its pitfalls, and they must uphold a light of discipline for the purest light, the whitest way on the great white way. I am come to assure you that the core of that teaching is nevertheless love a love that loves your soul far more than you know and far more indeed than your carnal mind a love that does not pamper but compels you by the most immense compassion to rise to the greater self even when fear assails and demons and discarnates berail you the soul rising with Christ upon that cross. Do you think that any soul is exempt from the path of the cross? Nay, if it were so, he would have told you. But he said that the cross must be born. It must be taken up. It is a cross of light. Remember that the burden is light. The appearance is of burden, but that burden is light. When you carry light, as light is given to you by the hierarch of Luxor, know that that light is for a purpose, and not for the glorying of yourself, but for the mission. It is for the bearing of personal and planetary karma. Wherever there is a vortex of light as the person of the word, there the darkness goes to be transmuted. For even the darkness is God, misqualified. It is his energy misqualified that longs to be realigned with the word. Where there is light, there is a vortex of transmutation. When you draw forth light in your meditation, then you must know the path of preparedness to deal with the darkness that is exposed within the subconscious of the self, within previous incarnations, and within the planetary collective unconscious. What for the path? if not to assist the way of a brother, a sister. What for the path, if not to raise up an entire evolution? 
We are the real and the living brotherhood of light and we show you a path of joy. It is not a path of sorrow or deprivation save for those who are not of the light in the first instance. For them the path is drudgery. They soon weary of it and they are no more. But the soul of light who knows who he is and why he is born seeks the way out not for selfish reasons but because by love he senses the plight of a humanity which by God must be enlightened in this age if it is ever to be enlightened and by God it must be enlightened by those of you who have taken embodiment determined to effect change why some of you have recently spent other lifetimes squandering energy and you have come before the lords of karma and you have seen Serapis Bay and me and Moria and you have said let me go back let me now take up my life in earnestness and contribute something of worth for I have spent lo this and other lifetimes here and there and now with the vision of inner levels let me go forth let me go forth with a light to lighten my way and the way of others and you have pleaded with Serapis Bay himself to contact you in this your present incarnation and to not leave you bereft of the memory of the ancient of days. Therefore we come to touch your heart with love and to tell you that if you would do something about your present plight and that of this planet, then you must dare to be different than you were when you entered this force field. For could you change the earth when you enter the hall this night? I say to you, beloved, if you could not, then is it not obvious that something must change? Is it the brotherhood of Luxor, or is it perhaps your own soul's understanding of life itself? Changes come, and by those changes you rise in new dimensions of your own selfhood. And by the gradual process of love, you come to know more expedient methods for contacting the multitudes of souls who are waiting to be fed. Would you become a shepherd feeding the sheep on the hillsides who know not the way to go? Is this not the real longing of yourself rather than to follow the fashions of the times and this or that interesting book or show or even some new teacher offering some new way of rearranging perhaps energy. Well, we are not content merely to rearrange energy. We come to challenge energy to rise. And the matrix of the rising of the flame in you is ascension's flame, ascension's pyramid. My beloved, the brotherhood of Luxor knocks on the door of the heart of the chilas of any and all gurus and those who have not yet entered the path of chilaship. Our purpose in this year 1979 is to work with the world teachers Jesus and Kuthumi to instruct, to initiate, to bless and prepare you who know that you have a more than ordinary mission and a very special life to live in the giving of the word to souls who need both the teacher and the teaching. Souls who need love and someone who cares enough to sit down with them and break the bread of life. We come then in search of those who have vowed recently before the Lords of Karma and those who have vowed thousands of years ago to strike a blow for the Lord in the beginning of that Aquarian age. 
It is an age that can commence a spiral of freedom and lead the earth back to those inner golden ages that once she knew. It is also an age when by the absence of free will, children of the light may postpone for untold eons the coming into the physical octave of that which is destined to be. No psychic predictions can secure for the United States or Russia a victory of light, a breaking down of the engines of war and of manipulation and of the abuses of the people for the gain of money and power and blood. Yes, indeed, there are initiates of the left-handed path walking the earth, manipulating the governments and the fates of the people. Indeed, there are initiates of Satan. Mark my word well. Therefore, let the initiates of light come forth and understand that if you would be match for those fallen ones who have seized their positions of power in your very government, you yourself, must learn to increase the light in the sacred centers of being. You must know that not you, but God in you can save a life that is your own and a life that is a planet and a people. You must know that it is by the eternal chain of hierarchy and your tie to it that mighty works are wrought you must know that when you go forth to challenge those who are the deceivers and destroyers of the people, that it will require the extraordinary arm of the hosts of the Lord and of our brotherhood to effect those changes that are desired. Well, tell me then if in the last decade all of the discussions and all of the demonstrations and all of the wars and all of the grabs for power have netted any light for the children of this earth or any greater vision of freedom. I do not see it. Perhaps you do. I only see the futility of the outer self by a scientific humanism, by Marxism, by a perverted capitalism, by manipulations of monopolies, national and international, by all of this, I see only the lessening of light in the total civilization, side by side with the increase of light in the few who have understood the path and pursued it to the best of their ability. Thus, side by side in this age, is the degeneration spiral of death in the midst of those who have gone astray, destroying their sacred centers by chemical means and drugs and pollutants, and thereby closing the door to the higher contact. We have seen those souls who have been tempted by the fallen ones to take the initiations of the left-handed path through the drug culture. We have seen these pass through the treacherous waters of the allure of the astral plane, losing hold on reality, the flower of youth passing into some psychic unreality, while the demand of the hour is to feed my sheep. Have you not heard the Savior's cry? And do you not know the allure of the fallen ones who promise salvation is in reality unto death? Not the mere death of the body, but the death of the soul. This is a battle for ultimate survival. And therefore we come. We are gratified that there are so many souls of light in this nation alone who uphold the standard of freedom. Now we would introduce to you the shortest distance between two points. Outlined in the Great Pyramid, 
It is the path of the ascension by the initiation of the ruby ray. The ruby ray is the intensity of the blood of Christ that is the true essence of love in such concentration as the rose pink of the third ray becomes an intensity that is a sword that is able to divide as a laser beam the real from the unreal and to judge error and the path of error. The path of the ruby ray is being revealed by my father Sanat Kumara, your father and my own. The path of the ascension is the path of the white light of the body of Christ. The body is the temple, the body is the word, the body is the teaching, and the body is the mother. And the mother light within you is the light of Omega. Thus by the ruby ray and the white light, the blood and the body, the Alpha, the Omega of being, there is the fusion within you of a path of acceleration that is for the sincere and the determined ones who recognize that they can no longer dally the centuries away waiting waiting, procrastinating their own self-mastery, but indeed the fate of civilization hangs in the balance of the decision of the few. There are other paths, lesser paths and slower paths that wind up the mountain, allowing greater passages of time and space between initiations, further incarnations, and, of course, not the great demands of the self for sacrifice and service. But my beloved, consider. Consider the prolonging of that surgery that must one day come if your soul is to become the fullness of the Christ that is in you. Consider then, why not now? Why not remember the ancient vow? Why not? You say why, and I say, look with me upon the suffering masses. Look upon world hunger and the displacement of persons and the boat people and war and look upon those fallen ones and their treachery and their cruelty and their torture of human life mercilessly who will call forth the judgment for the binding of those fallen ones it must come by the science of the word within you and it will come when you decide to make your throat chakra, the instrument of the seven chohans of the rays, and your heart chakra, and your third eye, and the crown. These are gifts of life which we have long ago given to Almighty God, and He has come into those centers, and He has worked a work through us whereby many have walked through the door to eternal life. This is the joy of the path. It is knowing that you become the indispensable link in the chain of universal being when you love enough to live and to give of yourself that another self might become the fullness of itself. Thus, the goal of the path is your ascension. But the path of the ascension includes all of life. It is the infusion by the light that flows through you of the body of humanity with the light of the living Lord. 
My beloved, I embrace you. For I, Paul the Venetian, have stood with the Maha Chohan, with each one of you, as that representative of the Holy Spirit breathed into your nostrils the breath of life in this incarnation. I, it is the cry of the man-child. I, it is the breath of life that I long to hear. And now I would impart to you the sacred fire breath of the Holy Spirit, that when you speak, the children will listen, and the demons will tremble, and the gifts of that spirit might be yours, to bind these fallen ones that are, to put it in the vernacular, messing up things on this planet, messing up the cities and the homes and the lives and the souls and the hearts of souls whom I love and know as my brothers and sisters. I lift the veil for a moment that you might see me as I am. For you know me and you know our band and I am determined that the decay and rot of a diet that is fed this generation shall no longer block your brains or your chakras, that you shall fast and pray and eliminate those toxins polluting your bodies that make you dense and not able to contact our light or recognize us. Yes, I come in the name of the Holy Spirit and I feel in my very being the intensity of the Maha Chohan, the intensity of the challenge of all those purveyors of a synthetic civilization that has served to stand between the children of light and the angelic hosts. Why angels walk and talk with you today, but you do not answer. In olden days, the children answered, the only difference is the absence of pollutants. Do you know that that substance and all of those chemicals in the atmosphere actually cuts off the outer senses from the inner senses of the soul? My beloved, I know you feel that intensity as you look upon the bodies and the faces, so many of them blank and the eyes so burdened with an inner sadness of people who are truly of the light and yet are so beset by the burdens of this life. I pray to you in the name of Gautama Buddha. In his name, in the name of the Lord of the world, in the name of Maitreya, wake up, wake up! Wake up and live for a cause greater than the feeding of your mouth and the clothing of your temple and the enjoyment of paltry gain. Wake up and see life who needs you and needs your love. Be not concerned about this messenger. Be concerned about your own relationship to the great white brotherhood. That is what counts. It is the teaching that counts. And it is your application of the teaching. Messengers have come and gone. But it is the word that they bear that lives on. It is the word that we transfer to you. And we must have a physical messenger and a physical temple. But your relationship with us must be sought and won on your own merit and your own love. Take then the gift, freely given, and know that in the community of Camelot we have called forth 
the Sangha of the Buddha and the community of Christ and his disciples. We have prepared a home and a school for children and a place for retreat and study. It is our cradle for you to give birth to the man-child within you. Won't you come as the wise men of old and attend your own birth in this lifetime? The mother's giving birth within you of the eternal Christ. We have come to celebrate your own Christ Mass. Welcome, my beloved. I pour forth my love to you and I breathe a breath for that transfer of the Spirit. <sighs> Perusha, be sealed in the love of the Brotherhood and your own God presence. I love thee, I love but thee, with a love that shall not die. Till the sun grows cold and the stars are old and the leaves of the judgment book unfold. Yes, I quote one of your bars to express the intensity of the love of the Brotherhood for our unascended devotees. It shall not die, but it shall quicken you to life. I touch you with the kiss of peace upon the brow.
neighbors, light bearers, keepers of the flame, we welcome you to the circle of the Guru Chila relationship. We welcome you to the circle of Serapis Bay and the Brotherhood of Light. And we welcome you to the community of the Holy Spirit called Camelot. This day is the decision to make your ascension in this life. Monello says, mark an X at the goal and move straight toward it. There'll be some slide meditations playing on the Royal Teton Retreat, which is where the Ascended Masters say that we should go when we first begin the path. In the name of the light of God that never fails, I call to the mighty I Am Presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, Gautama Buddha, and the entire Brotherhood of Light, with gratitude for the outpouring of the love and concern and devotion of Paul the Venetian and the Chohans of the Rays, we call to Sanak Kumara, Lord Maitreya, seal now all energies released this night within the heart of the Christ self of each one. Let them be never requalified by the human, but taken to be used in the service of all life. Seal each one with the sign of the heart, the head and the hand. The Brotherhood Eternal saluteth thee. So may the service of thy heart of light be sealed by the power of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Mother. Amen.